Last time we talked about how JavaScript allows us to do object-oriented programming using something called prototype-based object-oriented programming. And we saw that that's kind of an unusual way to do objects and classes. There really are no classes. Instead, we have prototypes. Uh, but it's really useful, and it allows us to have some of the features of a high-level language like Java or C++. Today, we're going to talk about one particular object that JavaScript provides that's useful for allowing the web browser, the client, to communicate with the server without using forms. And we call that AJAX. And AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So to motivate this a little bit, let's talk about what happens when I load a web page. So first of all, as you remember, the browser sends an HTTP request to the server, and the server replies with an HTTP response. Then when the browser receives that response, it has to do a lot of work. First of all, it has to parse the response. So if the response contains HTML code, it has to split up that, that web page, that HTML code, into different tags. It has to figure out what those tags mean, and it has to figure out how to render them on the page. So it has to first parse the response, and then it has to render it onto the web page by actually drawing all the different parts, which means it has to figure out how to lay them out and where they go. This is a really complicated process, and it's kind of slow. Now, we're, we're talking slow as in maybe a few seconds, which seems fast maybe to a human being, but in computer science, that's slow. We would want something that's going to be responsive and quick. We don't want to have to wait as much as a second for a page to update. This is especially true if we only want to update some of the information on the page. For example, suppose I have some sort of stock ticker that keeps track of stock prices as they change on the internet. If I have a web page with financial articles, I don't want to reload the whole page just to update the information in the ticker at the bottom of the page. I want to update just the information in that ticker. So the old way to do this was to reload the entire page and use server-side programming to fetch new information. That was very slow. AJAX is an alternative to that. And we're going to talk about how that works. So the solution is to only reload part of the page. And in order to do that, we need some way for the client to ask the server for that information, that new information. And the solution that we use is called AJAX, which again stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It's called Asynchronous because information is going to load in the background. And we don't know when it will arrive. We're going to send a request to the server for that new information. And it might arrive instantly. It might take minutes to load. We don't know. And that means that we're going to have to use events and event handling uh, to uh, manage the uh, sending and receiving of those messages. It's pretty obvious why JavaScript is in this. We're going to use JavaScript functions to request the data and intercept the information that arrives. Usually, this has been used with XML. So the messages we send to the server and the messages that we get back often would be XML messages. Um, so we need some sort of structured data. It turns out we don't actually have to use XML. We can do the same kind of thing using just a text file. Uh, or more popular is something called JSON, JavaScript Object Notation, which we've already seen in a previous lecture. Uh, it turns out that's a much better way to transmit information than XML because it's more compact. And so it's going to be faster to send to the server and faster for the server to send to us. It's also quicker to parse uh, because we can basically use the built-in JavaScript interpreter to parse it. We don't have to have an additional library that understands XML and can extract all the tags. So kind of the key to all this magic is something called the XML HTTP request object. It's important that you capitalize this properly. The X, M, L, H, and R are capital. Everything else is lowercase. What is the XML HTTP request object? Well, it's a JavaScript object, like we talked about last time, that allows a browser to communicate with a server. So we're going to be able to actually send information from the browser to the server and get information back. We can use it to fetch XML data, or as we're going to see, any other kind of data, we could fetch an image if we wanted, or a text file, or maybe a JSON object from the server. Typically, we use HTTP to fetch that data. But it turns out we could use other protocols too. We could use HTTPS, or we could use FTP. Uh, it doesn't really matter despite the name. So even though it's called XML HTTP request, we can request things that aren't XML, and we can do it using things that aren't HTTP. Uh, and it's going to use event handling and callbacks in order to process that data when it comes in.
So what is a callback? Well, do you remember on click? On click was an example of a callback. It's just a function that's automatically triggered when some event occurs. And in this case, there's a special event that every XML HTTP request object has. It's a property of the object called the on ready state change event. It's automatically called whenever the server receives a, a response to an HTTP request. So we're going to send an HTTP request, and when we receive a response, on ready state change is going to get triggered. So it's triggered when we send the request, it's triggered when we receive the response, it's also triggered at a couple other uh, places in that transaction. For example, when we receive the headers before we've received the response, and when the data arrives but isn't complete yet, we get it, it, it triggers. In order to determine if the data has uh, arrived or not, we're going to check a variable, a property of the XML HTTP request object called ready state. So ready state basically tells us how far the transactions proceeded. Initially, the ready state variable is set to zero, which means unsent. And that basically means we've created a new XML HTTP request, but we haven't sent it to the server yet. Once we've sent it, the state is changed to opened, which has value one. And that means that we've sent the request, but we haven't gotten the response back yet. When we receive the response, we first get headers. And when the headers have been received, the ready state is changed to two. As the data starts to arrive, we might have a whole lot of data. We could be loading a very large file. Um, the state is changed to loading, which has value 3. And then when all of the data has arrived, the state is finally changed to done, which is value 4. So what we want to do is create a function, a method, that um, will be triggered when on ready state change happens, but only if ready state is 4. So uh, let's use an example to illustrate this. Suppose that I have a web page, and I want to display on that web page a message of the day. And I want the message of the day to change as soon as I update a file on the server. I don't want to have to rewrite the web page every time the message of the day changes. I'm going to upload a message of the day file to the server, and as soon as I upload it, it should change in everybody's browser. So I'm going to name the file MOTD, message of the day, .txt. And when I change that file, I want it to automatically update on everybody's screens. So I can do that with AJAX. And the way that I do that is I create a new XML HTTP request object. I'm going to put it in a variable I call XDR. And then I can say change equals handler. Handler is a function that I'm going to make that's going to um, update the web page when I get a new message of the day. And then I'm going to use the .open method of my XML HTTP request object to get the message of the day file. So it's going to fetch MOTD.txt using a get request, an HTTP get request. Um, and I, true means that I've turned on error handling. So it's going to fetch it with error handling enabled. And then once I've done that, I send my request, and nothing will happen. Well, actually, one thing will happen my XDR ready state property will change from 0 to 1. Actually, from 1 to 2, I guess. No, yeah, 0 to 1, because it's been sent. If I want to actually do anything with this, I'm going to have to write a little bit more code. So let me show you what the, X, uh, the HTML is going to look like. So here I've got my message of the day.html file, motd.html. I've got my standard doc type tag. I've got my HTML tag and my head tag and my title tag. And then I have a script tag that's going to pull in my JavaScript code. So I'm going to put all my JavaScript in a code called motd.js. So that's where my functions are going to go. In the body, I'm going to have an h1 tag that just says message of the day. And beneath that, I'm going to have a div with ID MOTD. And there's nothing in my div initially. My div is going to be blank until my JavaScript runs. It's going to go fetch the message of the day from the server. And when it's got it, it's going to fill in that div with the message of the day. So how do I trigger the function to do that? In my body tag, I'm setting my onload callback to be fetch MOTD. So I'm going to call a JavaScript function called fetch MOTD. That's going to send a request to the server asking it to send me the message of the day. When the message of the day is received, I'm going to fill in the div. So here's my JavaScript code. It's actually pretty straightforward. There's just one function, fetch MOTD. First, I create my XML HTTP request. And then I set my onReadyStateChange function. 
Now I'm using an anonymous function for that, which is the stuff in green. I'm going to come back to that. After I've done that, I open my XDR. I call the open method on my XDR object. And I use a get request to fetch MOTD.txt with error handling. That's the true. And then I send that request. Now this is the code that we saw before. What's different is the part in green. What's going to happen is that when I fetch the MOTD.txt, it's, the web browser is going to load it from the server. When the entire message, the entire file has come back to the browser, the browser is going to trigger this function in green. And what is it going to do? Well, first, it's going to look at the ready state variable. And if the ready state is 4, that means that it's done. And so we can go ahead and parse it. We're also going to check the status and see if that's 200. Now, you may remember that an HTTP status of 200 means OK. The file was obtained successfully. So if we're done and we were successful, now I'm going to fill in my div with the message of the day. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to use my DOM functions. I'm going to call document.getElementById to find the MOTD div. Then I'm going to use the .html property and I'm going to set it to this dot response text. Response text is the property of an XML HTTP request that contains the file that was downloaded. Finally, I'm going to call set timeout of fetch comma or fetch underscore MOTD comma 5000. All that this does is it sets up a timer, and every 5000 milliseconds, that is every five seconds, um, it's going to call fetch MOTD. Fetch MOTD is going to send the XML HTTP request. When XML HTTP request completes, it's going to trigger the stuff in green, which will update the message of the day, and then it will set a new timer. So every five seconds, it's going to run this. It's going to fetch the message of the day and display it. It's not going to reload the whole page. It's not going to redo the H1 tag, for instance. It's only going to change that one div. So if I were to pull up the web page, you would see um, that every time I change MOTD.txt, Within five seconds, it updates the message in the browser without my having to load the page. Now suppose that I want to do something a little bit fancier. Instead of just displaying a message, I want to display the date and a message. So now I have two pieces of information that I want to transmit instead of just one. So instead of just loading a file, I need something more structured. So here's what I can do. I can bundle the message into a JSON object. Now that object could be generated by a CGI script that I wrote, or uh, by Flask maybe. I could have some sort of Python code that's creating these JSON objects. Or I could just make a text file, motd.json, and put stuff in it. So in this case, I'm going to put um, the JSON object that has two properties. The message property is going to be set to man his kiss girl on hillside is on the level. And the date is going to be set to January 4th, 2017. And then instead of setting inner HTML of the whole div, I'm actually going to now have uh, two different elements. I'm going to have a date and a message. So here's what the HTML looks like now. Um, instead of loading MOTD.js, I'm going to load MOTD2.js. Um, I'm still calling fetch MOTD in my onload event for the body. However, now instead of just a div with ID MOTD, I have an H2, a second uh, level header with the ID date, and I have a div with the ID message. Here's my MOTD2.js file. It looks pretty much the same as the previous one, except instead of just using the response text, I'm actually going to fetch a JSON object. And so I need to parse that JSON object. I can do that with a JSON.parse method. And then I have to fetch not just the MOTD div, but the message div and the date uh, header. And I can extract the message part of my JSON object by saying ob square bracket message. I'm going to put that in message.innerHTML. And I'm going to extract the date by saying ob square bracket date. And I'm going to put that in date.innerHTML. And so if I run this, um, I'll get a web page that has both the date and the message. If I change the date, it'll automatically update within five seconds. If I change the message, just the message will update. If I change them both, they'll both update. So this is AJAX. So what is AJAX? It's a technique for uploading, uh, updating parts of a page without reloading the entire page. It uses HTTP to fetch a data file from the server. And it uses JavaScript callbacks to update the page and the DOM usually. We perform an HTTP request by using the XML HTTP request object. Important to capitalize that, right? Um, and when 
we, uh, when the request is completed, we can handle it by using the onReady state change callback function, which we define. Have a great weekend. I hope that you are ready for your final exam next week. Please remember to email me if you have any questions. I'd love to help you.